as we normally do by taking a look to see who's in my green room tonight. My first guest is a great stand-up comedian. He played to over 450,000 fans on his last tour, and thanks to the recent fall in oil prices, he's probably Scotland's most valuable natural resource. It's Mr. Kevin Bridges, that is gentlemen. There he is. The brilliantly funny Kevin Bridges. Thank you for coming on, Kevin. My next guest is a great actor. He starred alongside George Clooney and Meryl Streep in the movies. You'll probably know him best as the lovable and likeable Jim from the American version of The Office. Is John Krasinski. <laughs> hey, John, great to have you here. Yes. As well as those two, we have someone so multi-talented you could fill a whole green room with just her comic creations. Not only that, she's equally at home on the West End stage as she was in the TARDIS. It's Catherine Tate. <laughs> Yeah. My final guest is a fantastic up-and-coming British actor. He won the BAFTA Rising Star Award and can now be seen in the multi-Oscar-nominated film The Revenant alongside Tom Hardy and Leonardo DiCaprio. It's Will Poulter. Hey, Will. <laughs> yeah, Will. And as well as all that, we've also got some fantastic music for you on the show tonight. Uh, when I drove to the studio today, I made sure that I packed both my drums and my bass in case they needed them. <laughs> It's the chart-topping, Brit award-winning, Rudimental. There you go. <laughs> That's my friend at the end, Mr. DJ Locksmith. Right there. Yo. <laughs> don't make the mistake I made. If you can't get in your house, don't call him. He isn't an actual locksmith. <laughs> Let's start the show. I want to begin by saying happy birthday to Wikipedia because it was 15 years old this week. Mind you, I got that information off Wikipedia, so it might be 10, it might be 17, you never know, you can't rely on the information here. Some shocking statistics have come to my attention this week about primary school children in this country because according to a survey, a quarter of school kids cannot identify a robin. I'll say that again, a robin, OK? <laughs> so there's, we all know that's a robin. Some of them thought it was a Pokemon. That's what it was. <laughs> It gets worse. 40% can't even recognise a sparrow, and none of them could identify a chaffinch. <laughs> In total, 55% of primary school children cannot name a single common or garden bird, but at least they all know what chicken looks like. <laughs> Shall we get my first guest out, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> Let's get my first guest out. He's one of the country's most popular stand-up comedians. It's the brilliant Mr Kevin Bridges! <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, yes, Kevin, you're looking great. You've lost a lot of weight. Thank you, John. As of you, yes, thank, thank we've you. lost another guy between us. Yeah, yeah. At <laughs> least. How much weight have you lost? Uh, Seventeen stone. <laughs> no, 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 you should have acted like that was a joke. That was clearly a joke. <laughs> so I've, I've lost stone. two stone. I've lost two. two stone. I've lost two. Well, it's hard to keep track of when you started. Yes. Like, yes. eating healthier, exercising, or whatever it is that you've done. W were you not prompted by, oh, I'm, I'm too heavy right now, I shouldn't be this way, and, and make a mental note of that weight when you started on your health kit? You didn't well, I was always fat right through school. I was the first in my class to get tits and stuff for that. Yeah. Audio <laughs> joke. <laughs> <laughs> and I just... <laughs> it's hard. And then the girls in your class start coming to you a few years later looking for advice on brads. <laughs> and... I was fat. I was 18 stone when I was 18. Wow. That's wow. big. That's impressive. But it's easy to remember. That's the achievement, <laughs> getting to that size rather than getting it back off. Uh, were all your family big or was it just you? Uh, that's a difficult question to answer on national yeah. telly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are all your family fat? Who was the fattest <laughs> one in your family? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, um, portly. We're a portly family. You're well covered. Yeah. But but it's, got, it's colder in Scotland, I've got it makes sense. Insula yeah. well, I've got a very well insulated family. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 18 stone at 18, and then I'm 29. Wow. And I'm 14 stone. That's incredible. So four, four stone. stone. But, but you, in 11 years. You stayed which big. Which is a difficult diet to <laughs> advertise. So it's been gradual. You're not going to see that on the front cover of a women's magazine. <laughs> How to lose four stone in 11 years. <laughs> But it's an achievement. You need to play the long game because you cut out, you cut out carbohydrates. Is I, that right? I've largely, I largely, I exist That's... essentially on meat and fluids. Right, and that cannot be healthy. Is it? Well, you look at me. I look amazing. <laughs> Once again, why would you laugh at that? You look amazing on the outside, but 
eating too much meat. I bet he's got hemorrhoids. And eating too much meat. And it can't be good for you. No. Because I went to a personal trainer guy and he's telling me, he's asking what I have for breakfast. I'm saying I had toast, mate. And he's going, oh, that's starchy carbohydrates you need to eat. He's telling me to eat a steak and eggs and... How, how the fuck can that be healthier that's than a bit of toast? Because your body can burn that. Yeah, that's giving your body fuel. When you give your body toast, it's, you're giving your body... Essentially, it's like cardboard that's been heated up, OK? With a bit of sugar mixed in. I'm sad that they've got to you, Jonathan. You've been radicalised. <laughs> carbohydrates. It's, I, I, I tried it for a couple of weeks and I thought I was going insane. So you couldn't survive without them? You no, wanted the I was fantasising about them. What did you miss the most? Anything. I was thinking a combination of boiled rice inside a baked potato or a, <laughs> a spaghetti toasty. I was, I was so hungry. I was going to organise a benefit gig for myself. I was that hungry. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I'd done was I took a year off booze, right? One year. I just get fed up with the hangovers. And in, in that year, because you're so bored, because booze plays a massive part yeah. of your life. That is, I came back, don't worry. It was, I, I came back. <laughs> so a whole year with no booze. And that, that was when you were eating... I the bread. Was, I was eating moderately healthy, mm. and then because you've got your weekends booze free, that's when you start going to the gym. I've took up jogging. Yeah, wow. I'm one of their guys now. And how is that? Because that, when it does feel a bit like you've you've kind of you know joined the other side there. This is not it the does. Kevin Bridges I knew no. years ago. It's sad. I've become. How did your old friends react to this new you? Well, I live in an area now where it's acceptable to go jogging, yeah. whereas <laughs> when I grew up, you just look as if you're getting chased. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I've even got the watch when you start uh, pausing, jogging <laughs> on the spotted traffic lights. That's four kilometres, guys, and that stuff. So. <laughs> I actually done an 8, 8K last night. Wow. The fact Which... that you even just said, I've done an 8K, that's a very I, different you. I, I even gave it a... Is that a thing, an 8K? Yeah. I ran 8K rather than done an 8K. No, you said, we heard you, we yeah. have heard you said, I did an 8K last night. It's, it's only, it's you close become to... one of those pricks. It's close to... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, self, can, what can I say? Uh, but it's good. I'm joking, but it's a great thing to see because you've got to look after yourself. You're a young man, and the work you do now, that will serve you in good stead. And you're, uh, of you course, know. it's like a savings account, isn't it? You put yeah. a few stone away, <laughs> you cash it in later on in life. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be that 55-year-old man scared to eat a sandwich. No, I've seen it. <laughs> don't want to be that Uh, so now you're just about to turn 30. Well, uh, I'm I turned 30 this year, Jonathan, yes. So I met you when you were younger, and I was amazed at how successful you were such a young age. So when did you start in comedy, and when did you know that you could do it? I mean, were you, were you encouraged at home? Did your parents encourage you? Did your family no. think, OK, this guy could be a professional even when younger? No, I was always in trouble at school, and that culminated in me being asked to leave school. So I got chucked out of school, I was at a loose end. My parents were obviously disappointed because I was quite academic. I could have went to uni. I felt as if I owed it to my parents to try and turn it into something. But the only thing, I was, I was 18 stone, I was fat, I was rubbish at sports. I thought the only thing I've ever been complimented on is being funny. And that's got me into trouble. Why not try and turn it into something positive? That's so a brilliant. What a great... It's almost like yes. an inspirational story right here. It is. OK. Yes. And so, so when you... <laughs> Not much filling up. Yeah, it's and nice. It's nice. 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 We'll put no. some music on it to get some emotion going. <laughs> so, uh, but, but did did you did you hit the mark running? Were you, when you tried out material initially, was it good? Well, this was when I was 17. You're young, fearless, yeah. rocked up at a comedy club. It went well. My old man came. He loved it. Wow. And so your, old man, so your parents were supporting you, in that. and that, that must be lovely for them then to see you actually try that and then go on and become such a success with it. What a lovely thing. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They used to come to a lot of my gigs because a lot of the clubs would say because I was under 18, I would need to be accompanied with a parent or a guardian, which is pretty uncool. Yeah. So yeah. my dad came to the first three gigs, and then he would say, oh, your mum would love to come and see you do stand-up. So the fourth gig, I'm bringing my mum and my dad. Wow. And then I get booked in this place called the Bridge of Allen, which, according to my mum and dad, was quite touristy, quite a cool place to go. So they're saying, why don't we say it to your uncle George and your auntie Maureen? <laughs> So I'm driving through in this car with my uncle, my auntie, my mum and my dad showing up at the gig. There's only about six other people there, so the majority of the crowd are my family. <laughs> and because I was so young, my material was quite smutty. I had a routine about waking up with a hard on in the morning when the house phone was ringing and I'm getting shouted into answer the phone and I've got this erection and I had to, like... I said to the audience, I would... Oh, it was funny when I was 17, it's yeah, not yeah. like the greatest <laughs> bit of stand-up. I used to say, yeah, you had to tuck in your boner 
yeah. and then walk with a duck arse. The routine was called the tuck it and duck it routine. <laughs> so I'd have to walk across the stage like that. Yeah. And it's quite tragic when you look up and just see your mum and your auntie. <laughs> The car home was like, oh, I went well, Kevin, before it was funny. Definitely. <laughs> Get a future there. So once I turned 18, I was free and yeah. I could start coming to London. And, and you could perform. do what you wanted. Yep. Okay. And they still live in Scotland, of course. Yes. And I know, I don't know, I don't know whether we should get into politics. I'm not trying to get into politics here particularly, but I know you were keen for Scotland to get independence, weren't you? Well, I voted for it. Yeah, yeah, because... yeah. So so uh, the fact that it didn't. Is that a problem, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> I voted for it, but not else. No, just okay. me. Well, no, quite a few people did. Oh, well, 45%. Yeah, which I think was very close. It was a very close result. But it was yes. interesting the way it was reported, certainly down here, was, oh, my God, it was so clearly they were defeated. We didn't know 45 to 55. That's not a huge margin. That's, yeah. you know, pretty close. So you're suggesting a, a no. rematch? Well, <laughs> I know 45 beats 45. But I... Uh... <laughs> I wonder whether, are you keen that you get another chance soon to, to strike up for independence? Nah, do you think just, it was something to do, wasn't it? Just... <laughs> <laughs> we did become the first country in history to vote against its own independence. <laughs> Is that true? Is that... Wow. Uh, it's quite tough to explain. That quite something, yeah. I actually had that in New York, an American guy, this is a true story. He's gone, hey, hey man, are you from Scotland? Uh, he heard my accent and I said, yes. I was going to say I, but I... <laughs> Translated. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and he's going, what, what, what the fuck happened there, man? Who would have fought Scotland? What about freedom? Yeah. And he's going, what, what about William Wallace and all that shit? <laughs> he's going, you guys said no. You know, it was before Asda. We're going to put their prices up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do Americans, uh, uh, when I'm over there, Americans, they, they tend to like English people. They love Irish people, it strikes me. How are they with Scottish people? <laughs> I had a guy telling me he was, he was one quarter Scottish. <laughs> he was telling me what clan his family were from. I think they still think Scotland's a bit tribal and stuck back in yeah. the brave yeah, yeah, yeah. days. And he's gone, oh, my family's the Abernethy clan. <laughs> and I'm going, all right, mate. And he's going, oh. <laughs> he's telling me their motto was Salus, Salus per Christum, which means salvation through Christ. This is in Gatwick Airport. <laughs> what the fucking Ned Flanders here. <laughs> There's a lot of warmth towards Scottish people I find when I go yeah. up. They don't understand us, but they just sort of smile polite. Yeah. <laughs> Your accent's the cutest. Uh, OK, uh, so here and now it's Burns Night any day now. Is it next week, Burns Night? I don't know. I think it's Monday night. You don't celebrate? I, no, I never... I assume... I, I, I bank with the Scottish bank, yeah. and they always invite me to Burns Night, and they make a big deal when I don't go, as if I'm letting them down. And I used to go, because I used to feel like, well, it's obviously a big thing for you guys, so I better come. You and guys. now I know that people don't care. I don't think I represent the whole nation. I don't personally celebrate But you're the, But you're, you are Scottish. Yes. And you are here. Yes. So I'm asking you about this shit. Yes. All right. <laughs> and I'm telling you... You don't care? Me... Well, I don't... No, I don't care. You're asking me if I'm celebrating Burns Night. I don't... How do you... You're supposed to address the haggis. You're supposed to talk to the haggis before yes, you eat it? you're supposed to talk to a dead animal. <laughs> and then you have some whiskey? And then you have some whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a nice excuse for a party, And then I you guess. put on your kilt, all the stereotypes, and then you deep-fry some heroin, and then... I didn't... <laughs> I didn't start with that. I'm just commenting on a big night. But do you own a kilt? Uh, I don't own a kilt, no. I had to wear one once for a wedding, and um, I was only about 15 or 16, and that's the last time I've ever... Did you enjoy wearing the no, kilt? No, because it's really itchy. Uh, and so you don't still have that kilt? You hired no, the kilt? I uh, hired the kilt. Wow. Well, that's probably why it was itchy. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially, Jonathan, yes. <laughs> and you get a knife as well. You say, called oh, a, you... a ski and do. A ski and do. And yes. you put that in your sock? Yes. What do they call a sock? A sock. OK. <laughs> would you like Kevin to stay for the whole of the show, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> yes, we would. You're brilliant, Kevin. I love having you on the show. It's Mr Kevin Bridges, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That was so much fun. That was so much fun. All right. Good time. We'll be joined by the fabulous John Krasinski, Catherine Tableby, and Mr. Will Poulter. Don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Kevin Bridges, who's standing for the whole show. And let's get
got my next guest out, though. I'm very, very excited he's on the program. I'm a huge fan of his. He's known all over the world for being Jim in the American version of The Office. Now he's buffed up and ready for action in the new Michael Bay film, 13 Hours. It's Mr. John Krasinski, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye, guys. Yeah. Hey, John, how are you? A standing ovation. Yes, yes, they, they were told to do that. That's the, respect. That's the respect I deserve. That's it, you've got it already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so very excited to have you here. Thank you, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Well, because The Office, the American Office, I loved The English Office. When it was on, I became a huge fan. But then the It was American very Office... adorable that you guys did your own version. That was yeah. so cool. <laughs> But, but yeah. I think most of them, and I think I speak for a lot of people, when, you know, the American office started, I thought, it's okay, it's okay, then it got better and better, and it got to the stage where I think it eclipsed the British office. Thank it became you. a better show, that and is I, really I nice. loved it all the more. I paid him to say that, but yeah. it worked. Well, <laughs> but in no small part of you, you were so good on it. Thank you so much. Did you think going into it, okay, this will be a success, or, or were you wary when you took on the one? Oh, very much. I, I, I watched the British office, like, religiously. I thought it was perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I auditioned with six other gyms in the callback, and uh, one, like six guys all auditioned, and I was the seventh guy. And they said, We're just gonna take a lunch break and we'll be right back. And I said, uh, Oh, can we just do one more? Because <laughs> I was so nervous. Yeah. I was a waiter at the time that I got the show. You're welcome, everybody. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and everybody went to lunch, and they came back, and a guy was sitting across from me eating a salad, and he said, Are you nervous? And I said, No, because you either get these things or you don't. What I'm really nervous for is whoever's making the show, because they're just gonna screw it up. They screw up all good British shows. And he said, I'm the executive producer. <laughs> I was like, oh, great. And I threw up in my mouth and <laughs> went out to the bathroom. And... Uh, but you got the job. So I that... did, yeah. Uh, do you, have you done any acting, Kevin? Do you want to be an actor? Is that something you'd like to do? Um, I've done a couple of small parts and I've been offered a few things. But I, I can never read a script. Really? Well, I can read, but it's like... <laughs> I just don't know if it's any good. If somebody just came... I wish it was in retrospect. Like, I'd need to watch the movie first. I'd rather just made yeah. the movie. That would be too late, decided. Decided, though. That would be too late for you to get I know, the part. No, but if they just made the thing and put some stand-in guy... Yeah. ...and going, that's the guy we want you to play. Yeah. <laughs> I know that's probably asking a lot. Yeah, I so. um, uh, now, John's new movie is n not, as you might expect, it's not a comedy at all. 13 Hours, The Secret Soldier of Benghazi. It's based on a very dramatic two-story, and it's uh, out this Friday. A very different kind of role than the one I expected to see you in. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and it must have been fun for you to rise to that challenge, I guess. A hundred percent. I mean, for me, you know, I come from a big military family, so I've always wanted to do a movie like this. I'm sure you've heard about it in the news, but these six guys who were not in the military got the call. They were working for the CIA, and they got the call that the ambassador of the United States in Benghazi, Libya, was under attack. And without any hesitation, they went over there and... and uh, tried to um, protect him and then came back and saved uh, 29 American lives in the CIA compound. And six guys fought off upwards of 200, 220 guys for 13 hours straight. Let's have a look. This is 13 Hours, Secret Soldier of Benghazi, and it is out this Friday. Have a look at this. Hey everybody, this is Jack Silva. We train SEALs at Coronado, so he knows the drill. We need immediate assistance. We are overrun. You have a U.S. ambassador at risk. You gotta send us. We're not even supposed to be here. Hey, you're coming in. We're on property. On the roof. Don't leave me. We're under heavy fire. Tell me what to do. Think about my girls, man. Every time I go home to Becky and those girls, I think this is it. I'm gonna stay. And then something happens and I end up back here. It's a very powerful film and it's a very noisy film as well. I mean, man, yes. there's a lot of shooting goes on in that film. Uh, and I imagine you had to learn how to operate those weapons, how to al almost be able to do that for real. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we went to weapons training uh, with Navy SEALs who are, are you know, uh, one of our elite forces and we spent time using these guns and the first time I shot a gun with them they're pretty big yeah that's how big they are yeah and um, so you know a, you definitely get shocked into being totally nervous that's a real gun you use for the yeah film? the whole movie we were using real guns we were shooting blanks obviously but we were using real guns and but even blanks people get injured don't they I mean they are pretty dangerous well the first day of shooting um, we all lined up and started shooting guns for the first time and 
truly the first bullet that was fired by all of us. One of them flipped up and hit me in the neck, which everybody was like, you know, hot brass, it happens. And it sounds like a cool jazz band. You're like, hot brass. <laughs> and then it hits your neck, and you're like, this is not a cool jazz band. This is, <laughs> this is awful. And I had sunscreen on, so the casing stayed on my neck. Wow. And the rule the Navy SEALs taught us was you can never stop firing on a firing line because if you go like this, you could shoot your friends. So for about a minute, it was just searing my skin. I still have a scar. Wow. So That's, uh... Now I'm a real man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can you see the scar from there, Kevin? Uh, no, your makeup team have yeah. done a great yeah. job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or maybe he's still a shit. No, I can see it. I can see it. I can definitely see it. Uh, now, let's talk then about, I know that you were formerly uh, a regular shaped person, and yep. then you became what we would call a movie shaped person, Okay. if that's right for this film. That must have been a hell of a lot of work, and I guess you enjoyed the end result, if not necessarily the journey to it. Yes. It was a lot of work. Okay. I thought it was like well, then, gonna now, be... Let's enjoy that for a moment. Let's enjoy that for a moment. Let's and, enjoy and you it. enjoy it with us, because you earned it. Can you imagine if I enjoyed it the most? <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Um, it was uh, it was very hard. I you know I, I tried to stay in shape as a you know whatever that meant. As I a working was, actor, I guess you yeah, have to be fairly like fit. Like power bars and push-ups. Yeah, yeah. So and then they were the, like uh, an eight k. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> now I have uh, the reaction to your uh, changed physique caused quite a stir online, uh, and we have some of the tweets that were posted at that time. This is going to be great. Now, uh, Kevin, would you like to read some of these tweets out for John? Yes. These are the John Krasinski tweets. These are. Like, and by the way, tea. pretend not to feel this way. Okay. <laughs> Can you now? Can we just check something? Because I know you're a very polite guy. Have you been able to understand anything that Kevin has said? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Feel that, Jonathan? Yes. 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 Every word. It's I'm, one of the bonus features of Braveheart. I'm sorry if that <laughs> was. How to speak Scottish. I need John Krasinski to hug me. I bet his arms would wrap around me twice. <laughs> That's about the length of my arms, not yeah. how good you, I look. Are your arms abnormally long, or are they just, they're just imagining that? I they, mean, they look I regular know. length to me. This one's all right here is the definition of walking sex. Huh? Have you ever had walking sex? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like The Walking Dead? Because that's a very yeah, popular yeah, yeah. show. There's an one here. Uh, Similar sounds. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, the definition of sex monkey. <laughs> what is sex monkey? What is walking sex and sex monkey? Well, you are, apparently. Well, yeah. that's the next movie, man. Walking yeah. sex monkeys. That's <laughs> this one's quite nice. And then the guy obviously ruins it by coming across as a bell end at the end. It just says, John Krasinski is super funny. That's cool. Thanks. With an amazing body fat percentage. Wow. <laughs> OK. Um, let me, uh, before we move on, let me just ask you, because you're married to one of our biggest British stars. Yes. Uh, Emily Blunt, the fabulous actress Emily Blunt. I love Emily. Uh, Congratulations. Thank you. Hold on. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what? Yeah. That guy got her? But... Not, not just me thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Why do you think I bulked up? Um, I had to earn it. Um, no, we have an a, a amazing daughter named Hazel, and she definitely is picking up on her mom's accent, which I think is adorable. Yeah. Um, especially at Christmas. The whole Santa Father Christmas thing, like, blew her mind. Yeah. Because I was like, we're going to go see Santa. And she'd look at Emily, and she was like, Father Christmas. Yeah. And my daughter was like, what's going on? I'm meeting two guys? <laughs> <laughs> and they both get free toys? <laughs> this is the best. Yeah, so she's, um, and she says, she has a British accent for something. She says, water instead of water. Yeah, the correct way. Water. The correct way. <laughs> well, you know. That's true, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Americans, I've rambled about this in the past, but Americans are quite lazy when it comes to, to listening to other accents, I've noticed. In they listening to other accents? Well, if someone says something and it isn't specifically, doesn't sound like the American word, they assume it isn't a word. I asked for water once and someone said, Wawa, do you want some Wawa? Someone said, they, they learned that from you? Well, no, we didn't learn anything. They were an idiot. It was an American. I said, she said, I don't would, know. You, would you, would you I do? I think you asked for a Wawa and no. he was like, I can, well, I can get you Wawa, but is, Wawa? Well, I didn't ask for Wawa. <laughs> right, the last thing I need in my life is any more Wawa. <laughs> this is Wawa? Yeah. You no Wawa. one says Wawa. <laughs> Could I have some of your Wawa? You don't. Ah. <laughs> All right, uh, John's going to stick around for the rest of the show, I hope, aren't yes. you, John? Yes. Mr. Yes. John Krasinski, ladies and gentlemen. That was great. Thank you, man. Thank you. Great fun. Still to come on the show, we'll be joined by the fabulous Catherine Tate and Will Poulter. So we'll see you after the break. <laughs> Show, ladies and 
gentlemen, I'm still here with Kevin Bridges and John Krasinski, I'm so to say. Well, we have more fabulous guests for you, and let's get the next one out right now. Uh, I know John's worked with her, of course, but I don't know if you've seen her quite like this before. This was from the Christmas special she had out this year. This was fabulous. Look at this. Here he is, Pokey! <laughs> How you been, son? Oh, God, I remember you. Yeah. Well, they do say, don't they? An elephant never forgets. <laughs> What are you mad about, Porky? Weight Watcher's not working out. I'm very happy with my weight. So you should be, darling. It's impressive. <laughs> Isn't it? Speggy, it's impressive. Ah, follow the sound of my voice. She's a brilliant actress, my favourite ever companion of Doctor Who, including K9. It is, of course, Catherine Tate, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> well, Catherine, well, so is this a reunion for you and John? When was yeah. the last time you saw each other? Uh, Tuesday. Ten seconds ago. All right. But you were in the office for like, yeah. the last, well, for some series eight onwards, weren't you? Is that right? Eight and nine. Eight and nine, yeah. Seasons, yeah. So how was it for you going out to work in the States of that? Because you're already a star over here, and then you went over there where I guess you weren't as well known. Did you like no, working in L.A.? Did you enjoy that experience? Well... <laughs> <laughs> John was actually there on my first... I mean, I was a bit shell-shocked, wasn't I? Yeah. I, I? I didn't like it when I first went. Because LA's... Now, I have to say, I love LA. Right. And I go back an awful lot. I absolutely love it. But it is... It's a hard... It, it, it's a city that doesn't... Were you going to say heartless? No, say heartless. I was going to say it's quite a hard sell when you first yeah. get there, the city, because it, it doesn't yield its secrets easily. Right, wow. And you can feel... So poetic. It yeah. is, isn't it? I'm, oh, God. Um... I nicked it off someone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I, I loved seeing you back as Nan over Christmas. I know uh, that it was, a, it was a couple of specials. Yeah, it? yeah. Um, but that, she must be one of the most popular creations you've been involved in. I mean, why do you think that she has kind of made such an impact? Well, I think probably uh, because everyone at some point uh, has either known a person like that, yeah. will be a person like that, <laughs> <laughs> Um, or, uh, yeah, yeah, I think it's recognition about that, isn't it? And I also think uh, the privilege of age means that um, it's funnier when they swear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I do think it's partly as simple as that. You're rude to people and swear. An old but person. An old person. <laughs> now, um, Catherine has a new show coming on Gold, 10pm on Wednesday night. It's called Do Not Disturb. It's very funny. I've seen it already. Uh, but this is, this is the start of a series, or is this just a, a try -out? To, No, it was just a one-off that I was involved okay. with. I think it may go on to do, to do other things. OK. And it's a kind of... It's a very adult uh, comedy. It is. And when my daughter saw that... She got very upset. Well, how old is your daughter now? Uh, 12. Well, you see, she Yeah, would, so it's that age that they're so prudish. Yeah, well, especially if it's mum or dad, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, you know, you know <laughs> it, it, if, if it were a 7-year-old or an 18-year-old, it'd be fine. It's, the, it's like the reaction of when I twerk. Wow. <laughs> if, if she was 7 or 18, it'd be, oh, that's so funny. So but I I'm don't joking. Know. No, no, no. 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 I'm joking! Twerk because Please move on! No! Oh just... my god! I haven't even like, got a bit of... <laughs> you know, you know, you know... I'm joking! You know, if this, if this sexual harassment case comes to court, you, you are all responsible. <laughs> what is twerking? Twerking is just the grinding of the... And that is Wait. that... Is that twerking? It's I not don't know. It's you're, not like, you're do dad twerking and I do mum twerking. Okay. okay. What is that? Uh, okay, okay. I only do it to dad. You have to do that as well? Is that I, twerking? I'd rather that you, you didn't. She's got to put her hands on the table. Oh, yeah. Shut up! <laughs> Look, I'm just saying, when I do this to my daughter... Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that, there you go. No, I do it as a joke. I go, Look, this is... I, I, Was. I feel like a new man. I feel like I've done 8K right there. <laughs> but I mean, the point is, you do something like that as a joke, and you go, you know when you do, um, 
You know, you've got your line in the assembly today. You know I've arranged it with your teachers. I'm going to come in and twerk. <laughs> and she, you know, she was really upset. So when she saw this that poster, poster... Let's see the poster again to see what upset. she was... So because for you, uh, they're not sex scenes as such. <laughs> no. But they're like just before they're sex comedy, scenes. You know, but it's a comedy. Yeah, yeah. But there is that thing, you know... And it's... When you do any sort of lovey-dovey stuff... Any on intimacy camera, on screen. It's intimacy on screen. Mm -hmm. It's obviously incredibly embarrassing. <laughs> but people are like, ah, whoa. Well, <laughs> she twerks what, once, he twerking thinks twerking he's does. in. <laughs> but um, the guy that was playing my husband, Miles, Miles Jupp, brilliant, brilliant lovely Miles Jupp, yeah. who I actually knew as um, Arch the Inventor from Balamori. Balamori? How <laughs> do you remember that? Well, I mean, we I didn't, it. but. We have kids. a picture of him in Balamori, you yeah. see, that's. Uh... <laughs> and he hadn't done any sort of, like, intimate scenes. And well, that's it... hardly surprising <laughs> when we look at that photo. <laughs> yes, but he was very nervous before we started. And what I thought would put him at his ease was before we did the first thing, I did this, do it, do it as if you're going to kiss me, OK? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's have a look at the clip. This is Catherine in Do Not Disturb. This is on Gold, 10pm on Wednesday. Have a look. Oh, what the hell? Are you sure you want me back? Yes. Not just for the kids, because me and the kids are doing pretty well with the whole weekend access thing. Not for me. For me. I want us to be together again. Any more sex with the young men? No, of course not. hoping that you'd be here. I want you back. I'm going to show you what you've been missing. Oh, thank you, God. Oh, I was in there. Well, it's a comedy of ours. It is. Yeah, a sexual yeah, comedy of ours. Thank you. OK. Uh, now, the other exciting news is I'm lucky enough, I've seen Catherine on stage. She was in uh, one of my favourite musicals, Assassins, for a while, the Sunday musical. You were superb in there. Thank you. And it was incredible. I yeah, mean, what a one that was. Uh, but you're back on stage in another musical, which I haven't heard of, Miss Atomic Bomb. It's... There'll be a reason for that. Uh, it's a new musical. Oh, well. Yeah. And uh, it's, I guess, premiering... Uh, in March. The 7th of March, there you go. Yeah. And uh, what kind of musical is it then? It looks, I, I, I'm assuming it's comic. Yes, it, I would say it's a, it's a comedy, musical comedy, based around the funny subject of uh, the atomic bomb testing. In hilarious. Hilarious, yeah, in yeah. the 50s. <laughs> uh, but while this was going on, what this particular um, show focuses on is the actual Miss Atomic Bomb pageants that were staged in Vegas, because... When the testing was going on in the 50s, it drew tourists to, to, yeah. to Vegas to, 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 to watch them. People didn't you know? realise the dangers involved no. in their clothes, so they'd go to what would, yes. would be a spectacular, right. remarkable yeah. thing to see. Yeah. yeah. And uh, why not write a musical about it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst job I've ever had of anyone trying to sell something on this show. I've got to be honest with you. You said tell me about it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I haven't read it yet. Well... <laughs> <laughs> I don't read well, stuff. There you go. Do you read everything? <laughs> so, Look, I... You've just got a good feeling about it. I've got a good... No, do you know what it is? Yeah. I... They... I got sent the video of the workshop. Right? So people getting up doing it. And yeah, I thought, good. that's good. I mean, obviously I was just skipping to my part. <laughs> so but I thought, that is funny. Your part looked good? Yeah. Okay. See, so, that's what I was saying. That's, so that can be done. People what stand up and act. <laughs> I, was, I was mocked. I, was like, well, no. I didn't know. I apologise, Kevin. For Catherine, you still, no, the haven't, thing is, you you still ask... haven't read the whole script yet. L Jonathan, don't make it sound like it's a bad thing. OK. <laughs> I'm saying, when we go in on Monday, when we start rehearsals, yeah. I want to experience the reason yes. of the play with the rest of yes. the cast. Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Yes. That was a good but start. also, you did ask me a hard question, and you said... What's it about? <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> 
I've never, I've never, I I've never had that phone back as a tough one before. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to say, yeah, it's a musical comedy, and the, and the people that wrote because it go, you don't it wasn't know. supposed to be funny. Right, well, I see. Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying now. Well, I, I don't, don't want sense. to miscategorize oh, well, it. It's so exciting. And I, and I you're like, know. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. So, so the night we just... see it, the night, the, if I got the premiere night, I'm probably seeing it kind of the same time you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> State, yes, please. That my involvement in this project is because I have a, m a huge confidence in it, and that is why I'm being involved in it. Don't need to read it to no, know that. No, no. Why would you? You saw a grainy videotape of people singing, mainly at fast forward, and that was more than enough. It is if it was enjoyable even then, when it slowed down and there's a story attached, yes. it's going to be incredible. And you know what else? I'll be wearing a wig. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. Sign me up. Me up. March the 7th, let's go and see it. Shall we all go together, guys? Yes, Do you want to go? John, are you going to be here I'm then? I'm coming back for it. Okay. <laughs> Kevin, what was the last musical you saw that really moved you? The last musical? Um, I went to see The Lion King on Broadway with my okay, mum. Yeah. And it was uh, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. See, oh. when they start the. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it was amazing. <coughs> but then I knew it was going to happen, so. Kind of ruined the suspense, but it was good. Uh, what else did I go and see? Avenue Q. That's enough. That's good. So, uh, <laughs> once you know, I only asked you once, Kevin. Can I just, I'm just make gonna, sure? Well, don't ramble on. I'm quite a One's fine. Dude. Right. One's Look, fine. Just stop. One's fine. Now. Um, one was fine. Look, Book how many did I... Good. Catherine, how many did I ask him to name? Did I say name a bunch of musicals you see? <laughs> if you could learn to answer the question as asked, we could get Will Potter out before he turns 40. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Uh, let's move it on. We will get Will Potter out for you. Catherine, you're going to stay with us at home. I am, but I need to... I, no, look, I need to say, because if you're going to edit this with me coming out twerking and then yes. saying, yeah, I'm in some musical, I don't know what it's about. Yeah, well... <laughs> well, OK. I'm sure there'll be... I'm going to say now that it's partly now. true. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be great, and that's yes. what I'm doing. Well, that's... And I love a musical. Yes, that's more than that. So do I. I sing War Horse as well. It's not musical! It's not musical! It's not musical! OK, we're going to take a break, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, we're, all gonna, we're all going to calm down. We're all going to calm down. <laughs> and when we come back from the Oscar nominated movie, The Revenant, will Poulter will be here and we finally get Rudimental out there as well. So we'll see you after the break. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm still here with Kevin Bridges, John Krasinski and Catherine Tate. Let's get my final guest out. He's one of the UK's fastest rising stars, graduating from the School of Comedy to the Heights of Hollywood in the Oscar-nominated The Revenant. It is, of course, Mr. Will Poulter, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Right. Will, how are you? Great to have you. I'm sorry you had to wait right to the very end to come out. No, no. It's all been a bit crazy. Uh, I feel, uh, you know, we've, I've, I think I met you very briefly once in the past, but seeing you have the success you're enjoying right now, I, and this might be misplaced, but I feel a sense of pride about you, even though I don't know you. Thank you. No, I, I so appreciate it. I know that might seem weird, but I guess it's because I saw you acting when you were so young. I saw you in Son of Rambo. I don't know how many people saw that movie, but it was a wonderful film. All of them are here tonight, which yeah, is exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Son of Rambo was a small film, but a big role, and it made a big impact. And mm. now we see you uh, in The Revenant. Uh, I think it's got the most Oscar nominations of any movie this year, or certainly it's up there with them. Yeah, 12 Oscar nominations. Now, where did, you, where did you shoot it? Because it's a pretty bleak spot. We shot it in Calgary, Alberta, in Canada, which is, I mean, the coldest place on this planet, possibly in this universe, um, it was freezing. Uh, but it is uh, set in Montana, 1821. So we're in Canada, pretending to be in America. Um, but it was, uh, yeah, it was a challenge, that's for sure. It's, no it's sort of stark but beautiful <coughs> as well. Was, did it feel that way when you're there, or did it just... Did you just, <laughs> think it just feel cold and miserable? Cold yeah. and miserable yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it was really cold and miserable, but I think the thing that kept us all going through that was the fact that we, we felt like we were part of something special. I don't think we felt 12 Oscar nominations special, but yeah. we all felt like we were trying to tackle something that was, um, you know, that was unprecedented in many ways. I think the way we chose to shoot this, all in natural light, um, all with real weather elements and, and, and relatively limited CGI. 
Um, I should say that the visual effects team do an amazing job. When I'm guessing that there's a bear in it. If you haven't seen it already, I'm not... That's a real bear, it. though. That's a real it's bear. It's not a real bear. That was Kevin doing a bear impression. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and he nailed it. Yeah, well, because... But it's a very impressive-looking bear. It is, and yeah. if yeah. you were involved, congratulations. <laughs> and, uh, you know. Very good. I thought I was going to get a nomination. Best I'm, not, I'm sorry. I'm embarrassed about that. Probably well. I'm embarrassed. Calgary, Alberta. That's the home of Brett the Hitman Hut. <laughs> that one I didn't get. I didn't get that one. I didn't get that one. That was so wrong. Wrong. You don't get it. It's just a fact. It's the home of Brett the Hitman Hut. Okay. If you go on Wikipedia, oh, oh, Brett, Brett the, the Hitman Hut. Got it. Brett, Brett the Hitman Hut. Did you think I said? He didn't say that. You were vomiting. Okay, uh, so when you're working, when you know you're going to be working with those guys, obviously you, you, you've had a, a degree of success now, but it, I guess it must be slightly intimidating, it must be slightly nerve-wracking knowing you're in scenes with... And you have considerable screen time with both those performers, Tom Hardy, very intense actor, and Leonardo as well, of course. Right. It, it, does that make it a tougher day for you or an easier day? I think so. I think if I'm being very honest, you know, uh, Leo was someone I kind of idolised, I think, growing up. I think a lot of people in my generation, uh, and certainly aspiring actors, can't help but be inspired by him. Tom, too, someone I admire massively. So to get to work with them was incredible. Initially intimidating, but they were so awesome. The yeah. most intimidating thing was being on set with men with such magnanimous beards. Yeah. <laughs> admit, it was just, yeah, because you don't have a beard in it, do you? No, well, it's funny you say that. That's seven months of growth. Wow. Um, that, that image you had up before Well, was, let's have that, a look. We that, no, that's... Oh, uh, now, that's... <laughs> that's fake. Yeah. Uh, that, that, I wish that was real. It, by the way, that gives me the most confidence. I'm having a bad day. I look at that and I go, go get him, buddy. And I just... <laughs> I look at him. So let's have a look at a photograph of you from the movie then, and we can see, so this was an actual growth of hair. That's, that's seven you months. You trying to go... No, is it? I swear on my life, yeah. In fact, so the shoot was seven months, and I thought, two months before, I thought, I'm going to get a head start. I'm going uh, <laughs> wow. to start growing my beard. Well, you could it. get hormone treatment, you know that. <laughs> yeah, actually, I need to, yeah. A Wayne Rooney it, in, the, in the face. It'll happen. <laughs> yeah. That's a horrible thought. Slide. I don't know whether that helps a beard grow, but it wouldn't hurt. No, but I mean, I, mean, I don't want to find out. I don't yeah, want to find out. I'm that not that desperate. Okay, well, let's have a look. This is uh, Will in The Revenant. You woke me up. Mm -hmm. You said you saw 20 Reed down by the creek. Oh, uh, yeah, 20 dozen. It don't matter. I wasn't going exactly hang around the creek counting feathers now, but, uh... Matter of fact, what was you doing down by the creek all by yourself? I'd already brought up plenty of water. Mm -hmm. Hey, answer me, Fitzgerald. I asked you a question. Well, they're in The Revenant, and that is out in cinemas now. Yeah, it was nominated at the Golden Globes. It was already won a few Golden Globes. Were you there? I was. Me and John were in kind of similar positions where I think we both felt like we were on tables but we didn't necessarily belong... It was weird. Oh, so you weren't... But, but there's a table... They had a table. Mm. There was... Uh, Alejandro Inuitu was definitely there. I saw Leonardo DiCaprio there. Mm. But you was, uh, for some reason, on another table. I was on a table with um, the producers of Shaun the Sheep. Oh. <laughs> Which, by the way, is incredible. You laugh. It is incredible. Um, oh, yeah, and the great. amazing Mr Sam Smith and, and, and his team... Um, but were you, you're not in, the you weren't in Shaun the Sheep, were you? I wasn't in that Shaun the Sheep, and I didn't sing the, the you, soundtrack to Spectre, so it was odd. <laughs> so you had nothing odd. to do with that table? I, was, I had nothing to do with okay, that table. And the table I was at was uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, Alejandro <laughs> Nuritu, and uh, the entire cast and crew of The Revenant. You were? Well, we have a picture. You actually were. So, yeah. there's, a, so there's at the back there, just texting as well. <laughs> That's legitimately me finding a way to get out of that picture. <laughs> wow. Because they were all like, how amazing is our movie? And I was like, I'm so sorry that I'm in this picture. <laughs> but how come you were in Will's... You were, presumably, that was your seat. <laughs> no, I don't... They said, uh, Will's going to sit in this seat. And I said, like hell he is. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and that's what happened. Now, the, you have a distinctive look. The eyebrows, obviously, are quite... A, you know, people know you for that. Uh, does that work in your favour, do you think? I don't know. I don't know. I didn't sort of, like, walk into a barber's and go, Tintin haircut, eyebrows of Satan, and, uh, <laughs> and then we'll move on. I didn't, I didn't ever do that. But uh, this is, this is uh, natural. But it's a distinctive look. I guess you don't get mistaken for too many other people, and that must be a good thing in acting. Yeah, although you say that, the, the weirdest interaction I've ever had with anyone who's been kind enough to recognise me and say nice things was uh, someone who thought I was Sid from Toy Story. Wow. <laughs> 
is the bad boy who lives next door. This lady stopped me in the street and she went, oh my god, oh my god, I'm so excited to meet you, I, I love your work. And I was like, uh, really? Um, uh, okay, thank you very much, you know, and it was kind of like my first time in America and, you know, one of the earliest, you know, sort of recognitions I've ever had. And she said, oh, I was a big fan of your work. And I was like, what has this lady seen, you know? Da -da. She goes, Toy Story is <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> And I was like, she goes, just such an emotional film, and oh my god. And I was thinking, she knows it's an animation, right? <laughs> I didn't want to let her down. And I think there was a small part of my kind of 15 year old self that was kind of excited about getting recognized. <laughs> yeah. So I think I just kind of posed for the photo and she went on her way. But that, she thought I was. She thought I was but you handled was... that with the grace and a compassion beyond your years. So I congratulate of you on that. the terrifying bully okay. next door. Thank you. Yes, uh, yeah, if no. you haven't seen Revenant, go and see it while you still can on the big screen. I would recommend you do. It's out now. I'm going to say thank you to all my guests. They've all been spectacular this evening. I hope you agree. Kevin Bridges, ladies and gentlemen, John Krasinski, <laughs> Captain Tate, and Will Taker. And now, here performing Rumor Mill, it's Rudimental featuring Anne Marie and Will Hurt. Here they are, ladies and gentlemen. It's on a rumor mill, the word is on the street. I, 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 I don't know how to feel about what you say to me. I, 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 cause the party pills, they won't give me no release. Chance of a remedy, no. Bad things be spread around, no, no, let it go, just turn it down. Don't be a fool, don't be a clown, can't tell me, won't tell me nothing anyhow. Bad things be spread around, no, no, let it go, just turn it down. Either way, I'm coming around, can't tell me, won't turn it down.